So in the last video, we took a look at how we could get the throwable object to within SteamVR to have that position information updated through the data store with NormCore and have it uh, mirrored in, in two or more clients. Worked great. One of the challenges that we have is because we have two systems, we've got the NormCore system and the SteamVR system, the ownership um, system of NormCore is basically saying, you can't pick up this object because it's already owned. But with SteamVR, if we go ahead and take a look at the object here, the ball, SteamVR is using a combination of the interactable script and throwable to allow us to be able to pick up the object. So right now, these two scripts aren't talking. So if we were to play this as it is and have two players in there, um, one person holding the ball, if someone else tries to go and grab the ball from them, uh, what will happen is on the player that's holding the ball, it'll look like the ball is trying to leave and then flying back um, and glitching because it's this ownership. It's not one to let go. On this, the other player who's trying to grab the ball, it'll look like they've, they've grabbed the ball. So there's a, a data sync uh, issue with that because these two systems are trying to fight for, for the right to control the ball. So what we need to do is find a way to allow these two systems to talk. When you're working with multiple SDKs or APIs or other kind of external tools, you really need to understand how these tools work to be able to best um, come up with a solution. So we know that the throwable script is what allows us to pick up the ball. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the script here. So... Um, and I, I strongly encourage you guys to take a look at this, the different SteamVR scripts or other scripts for tools you're using. It helps you better understand what's happening under the hood. So we know that this, this is the script that's allowing us to attach the object to our hand, and that's how it works. So let's take a look. Uh, if we just do a search here, Control-F, I'm going to search for the word attach and see if I can find anything that might stand out as something uh, might want to look at. So what we're trying to do is find the section of code that might be responsible for attaching the object to the hand, because we only want the object to attach to a hand if the person, um, sorry, if the object has an owner. So if the ownership ID is negative one, then we want them to be able to pick it up. Um, so we take a look here. So here we've got this hand dot attach object. So this actually looks like it might be what we're looking for. So what we can do is, uh, I mean, we could try to see if there would be a way to edit this script, you know, see if there's a way that we could bring in NormCore. Um, but even if we could, there's a big downside to actually changing um, code within an SDK. The biggest downside being if you update your SDK because, you know, either you have to or you just do, any of these code, custom code changes you make are going to be deleted and you know, you ha you'd have to start over. Rather, rather than rewriting or changing the code from this SDK, what we can do is use an, a concept called inheritance, uh, which will allow us to have a script that inherits some of these properties. So if we take a look at the real-time throwable right now, we take a look up here, every, every script is a class, right? So the class is real-time throwable, it actually is a child class of a um, class called mono behavior. You can see if I hover over here, mono behavior is the base class from, unit, from which every Unity script derives. Now, what we could do is we could actually change this uh, so not to be a child of mono behavior, but rather be a child of throwable. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's why we needed to add that VR interaction system here, because if I actually take this out, it actually is going to give us an error, okay? So let's just undo that. There we go. So now if we hit save, we'll go back into Unity and take a look. So we take a look, uh, scroll down once it compiles, take a look at the real-time throwable. This is our custom script, although it looks exactly like a throwable script. The only difference is we've got this one public variable here of ownership. So when you are looking using the idea of class inheritance, it allows you to be able to inherit all the methods, variables, and traits of another script. 
Um, and now what we can do is use an idea called override, which will allow us to override certain aspects of that script. So if we go back to the throwable, we go back and look here. Here's this method. So basically what we want to do is allow, here they've got this um, if best grab type uh, does not equal none, then you know attach it. We want to add in an extra condition so that if the object's ownership ID or the transform, real-time transform ownership ID equals negative one, meaning it has no owner, then pick it up. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and just copy this method starting point here. Go into our real-time throwable, create a new method. Oops. And we're just going to go ahead and remove the word virtual and then add in the um, keyword override. Basically what we're doing here is we're not replacing this method of on hand over begin. We're overriding certain aspects of it. So the part that we want to override is just this if statement right here. So we need to grab this. And we don't even need this inside if statement. We'll get rid of that. And we don't need this show hint equals false. All right, so here we've got, we're overriding parts of this uh, method, and we're going to add in one extra condition to this if statement. And, oops. And we're just going to go ahead and say real time transform, which is the method, the uh, variable we established up here that we um, connected to that transform, which is what is tracking the transformation of the object. If the real trans time transform dot owner, ID equals, oops, negative one. So negative one means it has no owner. So if the real time transform, the owner ID is negative one, meaning it has no owner, then let you pick it up. Now what would happen if we hit save on this? We'll go back into Unity. Now because we created a child class of throwable, we actually don't need the default throwable script. So we can actually can remove that and we're gonna to need to just connect uh, this um, grab method again. So let's go ahead and remove the throwable script component. And under here, let's go ahead and add a new event, drop the orange ball back onto it so that the on grab method is called. Now, if we were to play this in VR, what would happen is player one would pick up the ball, player two would see the ball moving in the player's hand, player one's hand. They would try to grab it out of their hand, but they would not be able to until the ball was no longer um, in someone's hand. This is the way that we can allow these two systems uh, to talk together. We're going to talk a little bit more about ownership ID um, later on. And in the next video, actually in, in class on Thursday, we'll take a look at syncing data. Because right now, all that we've been doing is syncing the transform um, of this game object. Same concept could be applied uh, with this paddle here. Uh, but real-time transform is kind of an out-of-the-box solution from Normcore. If we want to be able to sync data, like score in this case, uh, we're going to have to create some custom.